General Keith Kellogg joins me now. General, how would you describe the state of play between the U.S. and China, and does this meeting change anything? Hi, Stuart. Well, first of all, thanks for having me. <clears throat> Look, a couple of key things that came out of this, and I know the press conference is still going on. One, there is joint, no joint communique. Usually there's a joint communique that comes out. And also there's normally a joint press conference. They'll sit together and they'll talk about the two world leaders. That's not happening either. So I think this is more than anything else, I believe, a little bit of a photo moment where you get some good optics out there, but you don't really get some real hard decisions that are being made. My question, if I was in the news conference today, I'd ask some really hard questions of the president. Did you bring up COVID and, and the origins of COVID? That's important. We had over a million Americans die. You know, it, it hammered our education system. For the first time in 45 years, our, 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 school, our, our scores in reading and mathematics have gone down. So where did that happen? Why can't we work together on yeah, that? Yeah. The second is the economic piece. And the third piece is Taiwan. Okay, what are you going to do with Taiwan? He is very clear, he, President Xi, is that they're going to unify China, and that means take Taiwan. How, what kind of message do we send to them? Do we tell them to basically back off? That's a red line. We don't know that. I think we need to hear that from the president. We should never mirror ourselves. So what I mean by mirror ourselves, we should never assume that their goals are the same as our goals. They're not. Remember, President Xi is the same individual who was in the Rose Garden with President Obama and was asked, would they fortify the islands of the South China Sea? He said no. Within a year, they were fortified. So I'm very concerned about what's being said, and I don't think much is going to come out of this meeting, even if it was face-to-face. -face. I think he was taking the measure of the man, he, President Xi, and we'll just have to see where it goes in the next few months and, and year. Let me talk about the war in Ukraine. The Russians have retreated from mm -hmm. Kherson. President Zelensky right. said this morning, he says, this is the beginning of the end. What do you make of that? Oh, no, let me, let me well, ask I the question. Let me, let me change the question. Are we going to let okay. the Ukrainians win? They're on the road to winning at the moment. Are we going to let them win? Uh, honestly, Stuart, I don't think we will. I think we ha if we had intended for them to win, we would have been giving them the armaments they need well in advance of today. For example, they're just starting to get now the, what's called NASIMS, the, the National Advanced Surface Air Missile System. We get what we're slow in giving the high Mars. Look, here's what the Russians did, and it was very smart operationally. They withdrew from Kherson and they put a major river, the Dnipro River, between they, their forces and the Ukrainian forces. Smart tactical move. They also blew the bridge. The Androvsky Bridge is now gone. They can't get across that. So there's a major obstacle, and they're going to wait for winter. The Russians are going to sit where they're at. They're going to try to re uh, reinforce their forces after they train them, and then it's going to be a harder slog. When you're in a military operation, you want to have, if you're on the offense, you want to, to culminate an operation as quickly as you can. That's not going to happen now. So we're kind of at a fault for that, but so is the rest of the Western world in not arming and pushing the Ukrainians as hard as we should have to get across the, the, the Dnipro River and push them up Kherson. Look, I think what happened with Jake Sullivan going to Kyiv, the national security advisor, when he talked about negotiation, it sent a clear signal to the Russians that the Americans don't want to keep this war going. If you're going to send somebody to, to talk to the Ukrainians like Jake Sullivan did and talk about negotiations trying to end this, you're not to talk about winning the war. Hmm. You don't negotiate if you want to win. Um, I'd love to see a win, frankly. But General Keith Kellogg, thank you very much for being with us, sir. Appreciate it. Always. Thank you.